Never mind, I gotta unmute. Okay. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Y'all probably saw me run off the screen to uh, turn off my AC, but what's good, man? It's Hoops and Brews. We here. We back in the building. Sorry, rough late start. A lot of stuff to do, but we ain't did this in a minute, so had to go ahead, had to get it in. Joe, what's good, brother? How you doing? What's good, man? I'm solid. Uh, exciting playing basketball today. Ready to talk about the playoffs and the rest of the playing games uh, ahead of us. Yeah, man. Um, it's actually a very, 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 very exciting outlook. Like, I'm not going to lie. Both conferences. Um, both conferences. Yeah, for both conferences, but also mainly because... I mean, you know, everybody had this idea of what they thought the NBA was going to do going into this game. And everybody's like, watch out for the refs and all of that. And it's like, no, the Lakers very clearly were the better team today, even though I think the Pelicans. I don't I don't think that they necessarily felt too bad about losing today. Cause now you don't have to deal with that with the, with that giant white boy and and Denver. I don't, I don't think that's uh, how they looked at it. I don't think that's how they looked at it. Mm, I'm wrong. I'm not so. saying that they tried to lose the game. I'm saying they did everything they could to lose the game. And when Zion was hurt, we cool. We'll live to see another day. I don't. I mean, you can't. That ain't nothing guaranteed in the NBA. That Kings nah, game, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. If, you, if I'm what? if I'm the Pelicans, the Kings team is wounded. Like I, I like I okay cool Keegan did his thing, you know Sabonis is gonna do what he does every night, night in night out, damn near a triple double every night. But if I'm the Pelicans, we have the ability to much of a better ability to, to neutralize the Kings and then beat the Thunder in a seven game series than we do to neutralize the Kings and then beat the Nuggets in a seven game series. So I like if LeBron and AD want to tackle that. Go ahead, because y'all got swept last year. Am I wrong? I mean, yeah, but it wasn't a real sweep. Like, a lot of those games came down to the, to the wire. Hey, that's that it was, brother, it, brother, it was, brother, it was, brother, it was a, it was brother, a very, it's brother, probably the brother, most brother, sweep brother, in NBA brother. Moral victories are it from minor league coaches. It was probably the most competitive sweep in NBA history. Oh, they said Zion messed up his hamstring. Ooh. If Zion messed up his hamstring, it's over. Unless Brandon Ingram. Yeah, that, nah, that's your man's. Nah, man. That's your man's. Nah, that's man. your man's. That's not enough, man. Nah, he's, come, he's coming off injury as well. He's, he's coming off injury as well. But I do think it was a big game from Zion, though, uh, to go out there and do that. Um, especially the first half, it looked like he was mainly only going at uh, other guys outside of Brian and AD. Uh, Prince was getting cooked. Uh, Rui was getting cooked. Jackson Hayes was getting cooked in situations. But it seemed like every time LeBron James or Anthony Davis got in his face, or maybe he saw a double team, he wasn't making the right reads. And then I don't know where he adjusts and he's finishing over the top of guys. He's going at guys. He's getting aggressive. This is a big game for Zion Williamson. Obviously, you know, Shaq always says the same stuff over and over again. He's always, I need you to go get four. Years. But it's like he listened to Shaq and he went out there and he did what he could to put his team in position to win, but he just couldn't pull it off because of uh, obviously the injury. But this is a big game for him. And, and this is the first time, obviously, um, Pelicans weren't really playing, I think, last year or the year one of these years. But he wasn't there. This is his first taste at the playoffs last playing for him to be able to go out there and do that in this situation. I think that's big on uh, his career and what he has moving forward for the league. With Sony, now that he's finally, like, you know, in that game shape and he, Shots even put on a much better performance than he did in that in season tournament. I think when he absolutely folded, and even on Sunday when he absolutely folded, only had 12 points. Well, I think that's big for him moving forward in his career and what he has for the league. Because I think that a lot of people have kind of written him off, but I think the league should kind of get back on that Zion marketing train that they were when he first jumped into the league. If he can stay in this condition and, and stay uh, with this level of aggression. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. And to me personally, I think that Zion put the league on notice today. When you see me rolling towards the paint, get the fuck out the way. Because <laughs> he put LeBron on his ass. And LeBron, Finally. Uh, uh, you don't know, go, he, he no, don't no, go you want to know something funny? Like Do you remember when, when Zion was coming into the league, it was like a stat that said like the, the force that he generates when you take a charge from him is like getting hit by a Hummer? I think I saw that. LeBron yeah. felt like he got hit by a fucking Hummer today. Because <laughs> that, that boy went oh, straight. Oh, when, when he took a charge? Yeah. He oh, took a yeah. charge Ooh. and LeBron fell on his wrist. And bro <laughs> LeBron is not a small guy. He he went through LeBron like he was a fullback. <laughs> and, 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 and LeBron was a 5'11 cornerback, and he goddamn... <laughs> <laughs> um, what's I mean, big? DV. What's big boy name that just signed to the Ravens? Derrick Henry. Literally, oh, Derrick Zion Henry. ran through LeBron <laughs> like he was Derrick Henry, bro. Um, so I know that the Lakers are glad that you know, you know that they won that game, and and I know they breathed a deep sigh of relief when he went out of the game because if we're gonna be honest, the Lakers were doing their best to give away that game. Um, 
am I wrong about that? Like they were no, doing their lying, best job to give that game away. Um, and then Zion gets hurt. I, I, I didn't understand the necessarily the motivations for Willie Green. Hey, yo, shout out to the homie um, Simon Waits. He said, D-Lo, three-time ch- uh, uh, playing champ. He's the most mid player in the NBA. I, no, he's not the most mid player in the NBA. I'll say this. I give, I give D-Lo a lot of credit. You want to know why I give D-Lo a lot of credit? Because his whole career, his whole, I mean, it's not our fault he was written off. It's his fault he was written off. He did that shit in L.A., ruined his reputation, went to the Warriors, flamed out, went to the Nets, was whatever. He made the All-Star, he made the All-Star team with the Nets. He did make the All-Star team, but, like so much- it, but, but he's never been good enough for anyone to want him to stay. So I don't want to say he's the most mid player in the NBA, but I do think D'Lo will wind up going down as like one of the all time like um, um, great scoring um, like you know role players um, of the, of this generation. Like when you look back on this generation, you'll remember D'Lo as one of the as one of the great like scores that was a role player. Even at even at three that he hit, I mean, he's obviously been clutch his entire career since he was in high school. Uh, so, like, I I I like what the I like what the Lakers are doing. I think what the Lakers are doing is impressive. And if D'Lo is gonna play like this, I think they'll be successful. I think I tweeted it during the third quarter. If the Lakers are gonna play like they played in the first half every single uh, 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 quarter, then they're gonna win a championship. Like Austin Reeves, by the way. Ice in his veins, and I want my bottle. <laughs> I got you, man. Next H and B or whenever you go out, I got you. I no, I I no, 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 I ain't forgot about it. You want to know something <laughs> funny? I wouldn't even think. I wouldn't even thinking about that. One of the fans sent me Austin Reeves averages <laughs> in the middle of the Lakers game. Like TPJ, look at this. I'm like, yeah, let's get it cracking, bro. They holding you. They holding my man's Joel accountable on the bottle bit. But I will say this: I still want my bottle, but. That was, and I got to give you kudos and a round of applause. I actually got to load some applause into this um, thing. But I give you kudos and a huge round of applause for predicting that, for believing in Austin Reeves the way you believed in Austin Reeves. Um, give me your thoughts on the Lakers. And now that they're moving on to play the Denver Nuggets, are they actual real world contenders? Are we going to look at, do they really have a chance to beat the Nuggets? Before you do that, just center your camera a little bit for me. But do they really have a chance to beat the Nuggets? Go ahead, Joe. Talk to me. Do the Lakers Uh, really have a chance to beat the Nuggets? uh, I believe so. I don't see why anybody would believe otherwise. I understand they they did what they did in the playoffs. But like I said earlier in the podcast, it was a a very, very competitive series. And one thing to piggyback on what you were saying about D-Lo is uh, last year in the conference finals when the Lakers were swept, D'Lo probably had one of the worst series we've seen from a player. He had career lows and everything. I think he averaged like six points per game. He was getting benched in the fourth quarter. And when he was out there, he was a liability on both ends. He wasn't spacing the floor. He was getting attacked uh, on, on, on defense. And it was just, it was a, it was a disaster class. It was, um, he followed it kind of that way in the beginning of this season. He wasn't playing that well. He was in trade rumors. And then out of nowhere, he just, his game just went to a whole nother level. Like for the past, what, three, four, or five, it's a big sample size. It's not just like a, couple uh like it's not like small couple games or so last three four five months he's been exceptional um, i think he's having one of the greatest three-point seasons in laker history i used to hit over i think 253s this year shot over 42 percent from three and he is there in moments uh he's had some decent def- uh, defensive moments but man the three ball has just been insane he releases it quick one of the quickest highest releases in the league uh he can go off the dribble spot up uh he can come out off the pick and roll in various different ways he's making reads He's taking a lot of pressure off LeBron James uh, and Davis with the way he's played. If D'Lo doesn't do what he this is uh, if D'Lo doesn't what doesn't do what he did uh, doesn't do what he did today, <laughs> he uh, Lakers don't win this game. Um, if he can give us a couple, I'm not we don't need him to do this the entire series. Last year he didn't give us a single good game in the West Conference Finals. If he can give us two, three, maybe even four games similar to what he did today, I think the Lakers have a, a very legit chance. I think he's going to be the X factor for the uh, series because coming from getting nothing from him last year to Getting uh, what he's been doing this year, last three, four, five months of the season, that will that, that changes the entire dynamic of the series. And I also think this Lakers team is just um they're more they're more they're more seasoned. Um, they they play well together. Um, I think we got about four or five more wins than we did last season this year. 
And that could have been changed if uh, Ham, I think he was doing a little bit too much at the start of the year. He didn't have really any starting lineup, was running Cam Reddish out there, was doing a lot of, he was just doing too much experimenting when the recipe was right there in front of your face. When he got back to the basics, which is Rui in the starting lineup, Reeves in the starting lineup, and these things, Lakers, they start winning basketball games, just like how they did uh, post All Star break last year, heading into the crazy fire run that they had um, last year. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so once he, they got to the basics, they became a different basketball team. Um, they just have to come. It's gonna come down to the execution. They can uh, run these lineups. They can shorten the rotations. Um, guys can show up. Uh, Reeves can continue to be big form. Rui can continue to be big form. And they can, if they have to execute down, because uh, pretty much every Lakers Nuggets game kind of ends the same way. Uh, it'll be a back and forth battle, back and forth battle. The next thing you know, boom, boom, Nuggets are up six straight, eight straight. A couple bad plays will happen, and, and the game is over. It, it, it'll go in that direction. But I think that. Um, with the chemistry the team has now, this is now the second year coming back with the same core. Uh, same core. I think it'll be a little bit more different coming down the stretch with these games, and I think that they can keep it close. I think they have, they definitely have the star power. Uh, they have the um, they have the they have the I think they have the big. Uh, they kind of only area they kind of lack that, that worries me is that they don't have the depth. The bigs. If you look at twenty twenty when the Lakers beat the, the Nuggets, they had Javale McGee, Dwight Howard, and Davis. Now you're just kind of looking at it's more just Davis, and I mean Hayes has his moments, but Hayes is not yeah. He's not that reliable on that aspect of Gardner Joe because he's gonna get into foul trouble quick. He's gonna jump at everything, and uh, he just isn't really skilled unless he's you know got a lob or he's got a wide open lane to the basket. Um, but besides the the, the 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 big aspect, I think that the Lakers do have a shot at this team. I don't think that, and I think one of the most outrageous takes heading into this offseason that the Lakers should tank and avoid this team. Like that's not something professionals do. Um, I'd rather get this series. Uh, this is a matchup. Me personally, I wanted to get out the way in the first round. Get this out the way. Let's go. If we if we get him, we get him. Um, if not, or we don't, because I mean, we're gonna have to run them to them regardless. We'll get them fresh. LeBron Davis is gonna get what's today, Tuesday, get about start series, start Saturday. I think they get about three, four uh, days of rest. Mm-hmm. I come back and uh, head into Saturday. Um, we should be locked in. This is not LeBron coming out of a couple of playoff series, not AD coming out of a couple of playoff series. We get them fresh in the beginning. If we get them, the momentum will be crazy. I think, I think if the Lakers beat the Nuggets, I, I pretty much lock in the Lakers Mavericks worth the conference finals, but I do think it's uh possible this year for us to get over this hump but i mean if not i mean it is what it is but i do think it's i wouldn't bet on it but i do think it's very actual possible that they be i think they have a higher chance of beating out the first time than the clippers do for sure yeah i'm i think the lakers are um actual contenders uh for the first time really at all year and the reason why i say that and i agree with you is because i believe that if the lakers are able to beat the nuggets i think they're going to go to the finals and they'll play the celtics and I think the NBA gets their wish, Lakers Celtics first round. Um, I think that would be something that would make Adam Silver's heart just flutter and go crazy, especially now you got Caitlin Clark going to the WNBA, you coming off Lakers Celtics finals. Um, maybe LeBron, if LeBron can somehow pull together a, a ring this year, this is a legacy year. This will, if, if the Lakers win the championship, and LeBron is the best player on the Lakers, I will no longer be upset at anyone who says that LeBron is greater than Michael Jordan. And I think that LeBron has a lot left in the tank um, for one more final run. And honestly, you you go, and this might sound crazy, but if LeBron win a ring this year, he probably should retire. Uh, not, not without that farewell tour. You know you need that farewell tour. Well, why? You you, why does LeBron need a you know farewell tour? That. Because it's too much. It's just too much. To, that's just too much. That's too much of an opportunity. No, he's not passing on that. Especially LeBron. We know LeBron. Loves, I mean, I mean, the ego, the ego. He loves getting his flowers. The ego the maniac yeah. that LeBron is. He's he gonna take his farewell tour. tour but, yeah, exactly. but but winning, but <laughs> winning, num- but winning number five, and then being like, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to start the franchise in Vegas would be fire. That would be that would be amazing too. That, that would be fire. Or I'm, the- or, 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 yeah, yeah. Or I'm going to bring back the Seattle Supersonics because Nike headquarters is up there in Washington. That would be fire. Also like I, the, mm-hmm. yeah, the go ahead. James, the Bronny James aspect. Don't forget, you might want to. He's not making the league. We gotta. A, we have. to. No, we have last, to stop. His last name is fan, James. We have to stop with this he's fantasy. We have to stop with this fan. Like, like he could barely get any time on his own team in college. His last. Name I don't is understand James, this, bro. His last name is James, man. You don't think LeBron could strong, strong armor team into getting um, look shout out on there? Shout out black nepotism. I love it. It's beautiful, but this is ridiculous. 
You don't think if Giannis it's like, the it's like, it's the like J. Cole taking up a roster spot. You don't think in Africa. If, what is what is Tenace doing on the for the for the uh for the Bucks? Tenace roster spot. Yeah, why, why is that happening? Because of his brother. You don't think LeBron James got more power than Giannis he, Antetokounmpo? I disagree <laughs> with that though. Have you ever seen Dame Lillard talk about the Nassis? Oh my God! Because he's a. It's because he's a. Come on, man! Don't do that. It's because he's. Popular. So you telling me he, a he team brings goes, energy to the team? So you telling me a team drafting Bronny to to bring energy? To bring no to possibly bring LeBron James. And you don't think LeBron James could easily hint at kind of like when LeBron told the Heat to draft some Boz Napier, then he dipped out on him, and it, it just kind of just stuff like that. Um, I just think just off the strength of his last name alone, and that he's going through, he's going to go through workouts. And also, last season is kind of, kind of an anomaly for him. It doesn't really show his talent, showcase his talent the way it was supposed to. He coming off the heart injury. USC is probably was one of the was probably a bottom three team in the Pac-12. They 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 were horrible. And it's just, it, it was it was a mess. Uh, LeBron even talked about himself on the podcast. How he watching them gave him a headache. It was just a USC was an all around all around mess. But if he can show some decent skills in the combine, if not, then he can come back to another team where hopefully he can showcase himself, getting at least maybe ten or sixty. If he per don't game. go to the league this year, how many years is it going to take him to get to the league? No more than no more than two. No more than two. So LeBron gonna play three more years. I say LeBron has that's two more years for LeBron after this one. You know you can't. All right. <laughs> All right. If that's what you say, I can see. I just think Le- LeBron himself just has too much. He's it's too too powerful to not let it, um to make for his son not to make the league. And I don't think his son is like trash trash. Like I mean, he can hit he can hit a three. I never said he was he trash. Has high IQ. I never said he was trash. Yeah, he's athletic. I never said he was trash. He, I said he wouldn't get no tick on his own college team. And, and this is no, and this is no disrespect to him. He had a a catastrophic injury for the that, he's that he's recovering from, and I I mean I I just I don't know. To me, it's just like if 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 he was anybody else's son, would we be saying the same things? No, we would no, not. No, no, most definitely. And not. and to and to me, I think that that that's that's an injustice and a dis and it does a disservice to a lot of basketball players out there. That deserve the opportunity because you can say what you want to about the Nassis, but he still got a team. He been in the league for a while now. It's not like he only been there one year because he's Giannis' brother. Like Giannis got other brothers that ain't on teams no more. I mean, you could argue Costa, the reason Costa's not on no team no more. You could argue the reason why he was on that team because the Lakers was trying to <laughs> draw Giannis. That was the whole reason. No, why but Co- no, but Costa was, was the- on like two different teams though. That's my point. I- and then he flamed like, out. He's not in the league no those, more. Those stints weren't that long. He's not in the league. But that's my I, whole... But you're missing my point, Joe. That's exactly my point. But my point is, he had brothers that tried to make the NBA and could not make the NBA. The Nassas made the NBA, and it has been in the NBA for like seven years. At what point do we just stop this? You don't think Bryant could do the same thing? Flame out. Uh, he's get. He's gonna have. The, he's definitely gonna get opportunity. He's definitely gonna get, if not multiple opportunity, just off his. Like it's just. It's too. It's too much power there. Look, I. I look, I, I'm not arguing against the opportunities. I'm arguing that if you telling me LeBron is gonna come back because he won a farewell tour and to maybe play with, maybe play with Bronny in one game when Bronny get in for five minutes <laughs> over the course of a 82 game season. Cool. I respect it. That's beautiful. That's black love. That's black father, son. That's family right there. I love that. That's beautiful. But if we talking about actual NBA basketball, come on, man. Is Bronny better than Davion Mitchell right now? Is he even better than Davion Mitchell was when Davion Mitchell came in the league? No. He can be, though. Like, he can be if he continues to work. Like, he Gee, can. Davion Mitchell, my height. He your height. <laughs> You what, an inch taller than me? Inch and a half or taller or, than me? Yeah, EO, or the same, or the same, but... EO fucking height. What you talking about? <laughs> but I think EO the... goddamn height. You sit up here talking... Like, like that's what I'm... That's that, But I'm it's, I'm not saying this to be disrespectful. I'm just saying, like, if they got to put... If they if he wins a ring, there is nothing left to prove. There is nothing left to play for at this point in time. You're not getting six. You're not even, getting six. Even if you're not... You want to know though. why you're not getting six? You're not getting six, number one. Because Shea and them boys coming back way better next year, just off of experience, because they ain't never had none. And them coming back way better next year, just because off of experience, they ain't had none. Celtics ain't going nowhere. 
Bucks ain't going nowhere. 76 is not going nowhere. Nuggets not going nowhere. Mavericks just rebuilt their team at the trade deadline. They not going nowhere. The Suns strapped in with that cap and Grayson Allen and KD and them, they not going nowhere. The Kings going to be healthy again. They not going nowhere. The Warriors, God knows what happens with them, but they still may be in the mix. And you got that goddamn alien in San Antonio where if you <laughs> give him one or two pieces, he, they in the mix. You don't think so, Brown want to pat his scoring record as well and just keep getting all these records and stuff? He at, also, I think he what, like doing that like, as well. At this Patting point, all these what, no, at this point what, do, what does any of this stuff prove? That's my point. My I point mean, is, no, my point is he can keep playing basketball until his leg fall off. <laughs> but what is the point, bro? It's basketball, man. It, I mean, that's 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 all a lot. I'm not saying Le LeBron is in the very rush side too, but that's a lot of that's all Look, the, the same way I feel about basketball. Diana Taurasi. It, it's time to move out the way. It's just time. It's nothing. Look, like, bro, it's nothing wrong with it being time. Like I don't think LeBron is better than he's than he was any year in his career, other than his uh, after his third year right now. You could argue he's better than la this year than last year. Though. No, he was. No, he's not. He played. Yes, yeah. He played. No, he played like seventy games this year. No, he played more games. That doesn't mean he was better this year. I don't. And the Lakers won more games. He played. Bro, more. they made it to the like, conference finals last year. The same thing happened this year. And they weren't healthy. No, you missing my point, bro. My point with LeBron is, to me, last year he played better than he played this year. This year, I it's a it's a visible fall off. He be missing layups all the time. He been missing layups the last like four, like, four, four five, six years. Or Sorry, I got an eyelash. He still in my, had an uh, uh, exceptional season though. He's no, still gonna be he all be NBA. He's still all he's still unanimously no, he's at least third team All NBA. LeBron not gonna make All NBA. Uh, LeBron not gonna make All NBA. Come on, man. Now nah, let's listen to All NBA right now. All right, let's do it. Hold on. Oh, wait uh, I got a goddamn eyelash in my. Uh, damn, I got an eyelash in my eye. Um, who makes All NBA? All right, first team. Let's go. Uh, my first team. I'm going Shea, Luka, Tatum, Jokic. Hold Brunson. on. Slow down, brother. Slow down, uh, brother. Uh, all right. One <laughs> at a time, brother. Shea. Uh, okay. Why? Luka. Why? Oh, but Shea. why though? Oh, I mean, best player on the uh, best team in the conference, youngest team in NBA history to ever get the one seed, 30 points per game, consistently night in and night out. Clearly the best player on that team, despite the fact that they do have supporting features, he's clearly the guy they lean on night in and night out to get them their wins. And he shows up 75 plus games, just the the, the staple of consistency consistency and, and everything you want in your lead guy, uh, night in and night out. I think he's unanimous first team on NBA. Uh, and then I'm going uh, – Luca obviously uh, led the Mavericks to the fourth seed, having arguably his best season in his career. He's out there consistently every night, putting up magical numbers, doing stuff we've never seen. Pretty much a new move, something new every wow, and everybody every single night. Uh, Tatum, uh, best player on the best, one of the probably one of the best teams, regular season teams over the last five to ten years. They comfortably won, uh, clinched the best record in the East months ago. Mm hmm. Uh, comfortably, uh, one of the, uh, comfortably, uh, let them to the. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Comfortably let them to the best team in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the best team in the, in the East, in the league and the East, like by, by, uh, landslide out there every night, 28 points a game, uh, hitting big shots, uh, doing, uh, playing both sides of the floor. He sometimes he's taking the best matchup. Wow. He's also giving them 30, uh, just another uh, exceptional Jason Tatum season. Uh, pretty much what the norm for him. I think he's been all NBA last like three, four years. He's set up for a, a super max, uh, super maxes, uh, I believe this summer. Uh, then, uh, obviously Jokic, um, the possibly the third, three time MVP, um, in the next couple of months, uh, exceptional leading the Nuggets to another great year. They finished with the two seed this year, a walking triple double, um, the leader of that, of that group, uh, does a great job finding is those guys hitting big buckets, and just doing his pretty much just doing everything you want. Like pretty much just the definition of a, of a modern center, uh, the ability to play, make, shoot, put the ball on the floor and hit contested tough shots. I just, and then I think my, my last pick, I, I slid Brunson in there um, for a number two. And the, uh, I think Jalen Brunson has been exceptional. The best Knicks point guard we've seen in over in my lifetime, over 20, 30 years. 
And um, to get them to the two seed with Randall being out, um, rallying these guys the way he has done, I think has been absolutely amazing. He has made the Knicks must-see TV all by himself. Uh, pretty much, they have obviously have a great supporting cast. I think they have like about three, four guys having a career year this season. But all that feeds off of Brunson, the way he leads them, the way he lights up the uh, the Madison Square Garden night in and night out, uh, the big shots he hits and the effort he plays with, and the tough shots he hits, and and being at his size, he's shorter than me. And you, I think he's like five ten, I believe. For him to go from being a second fiddle guy in in Dallas to being a lead guy and taking his team to heights like this, um where most people were, were, were questioning the signing from going from a guy that's like, I don't know if he deserves that 90, 100 million. I think that's crazy to this dude is top five in a lot of people's MVP ballots after what he's done this year. So I'm throwing Brunson as the fifth guy in my um, first team on the NBA. Cool. I'm going Shea um, because, as you said, they have the best record. Uh, also, he's just been the best point guard in the league this year. Um, then I'm going to go Luka Doncic just because Luka has just been a force, um, and he's been a force since he stepped in. I told y'all he was going to be better than LeBron. Only thing he's missing right now at this pace is a ring. If he win a ring this year, he's been he's better than LeBron ever was, period, point blank, in a story. <laughs> if he score less than 32, 8-8, eight and eight, his averages go down. You ain't never heard nothing like that before in your life. Um, then number three, I am going to agree with you and go with Tatum. Tatum is very vanilla, but I mean, I guess it just matches. Um, it just matches his personality. He's just very vanilla, but I gotta give him credit. He's been balling this season, and they had the best record, and he was the best player on the best team. Um, then I'm gonna go to Nikola Jokic because he's still the best player in the league to me personally, pound for pound. Um, and just the way he's able to be a dynamo and just really orchestrate. The game of basketball, um, you know, kind of the way a musician plays music, he does it on a basketball court. And I'm going with Giannis. Um, average 31, um, 10 plus rebounds, six plus assists, shot over 60 percent from the field. The first player to average average over 30 and shoot over 60 percent from the field. Um, so I think he had a phenomenal year, and he's always still a defensive freak, even though he's not the as explosive as he once was. Um, and then I'll go ahead and lead off the second team. For my second team, I have uh, Jalen Brunson. I have Anthony Edwards. I have Anthony Davis. I have hmm, – that's interesting. It's kind of interesting because, I, cause, yeah, you might not like this, and I know he didn't make the all-star team. But I'm actually put Demontis Sabonis on my second team. I'm not mad. He's had a pretty good. I'm not he, mad at uh, he didn't make I'm the All Star team, but he averaged basically 20 he points, 13, 13, yeah, 13.7 uh, rebounds per game. He averaged what? How many assists per game he averaged? I think it was over seven. Yeah, he averaged 7.7 assists per game. He shot 37.9% from the three-point percentage and 59.4% from the field goal range. Like, he played out of his mind this year. He really did. And I, honestly, I, he's never going to get the love he deserves, but I really do feel like he deserved that love this year. And personally, I'm going to put him on that team. Um, and is that five? Uh, was that? I think that was four. I said, I said, I said, I said Brunson... I said Brunson, um, damn, who did I say? I said Brunson, Ant, Anthony Davis, uh, Brunson, Anthony Davis, Sabonis. You need one more. That's kind of hard. That's kind of tough. Mm, that's interesting. It's so crazy how Tyrese Halliburton just kind of fell off. Yeah, he's. They, they say he's playing hurt, though. Okay. Well, he got well. He, well, he all he got to do is really outplay Dame. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, you know what? I guess I would probably put LeBron. I really hate to put two 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 Lakers in there, especially given their seed. Um, but I don't. But I also don't want to put two Tim Bulls in there. So I would probably put LeBron there. Who you got on your second team? Uh, my second team. I got Giannis on my second team. Uh, obviously, I he got. Uh, what you say, he's having a pretty good year, but I just can't. They started off 30 and 13 and didn't get the 50 wins. Uh, the fall off is just a little bit too crazy in the second it's half. Doc fault. I, that's, 
It's, no, that's a lot to blame. All right, brother. Dog. That's look, 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 look. I'm not even trying to pull the son you reporter card because you're not reporting. <laughs> like, do you do, were you at the games? But real shit, <laughs> was you in them locker rooms after they lost some of them goddamn games when they lost in the fourth quarter? <laughs> They he ain't Doc ain't the Doc ain't had no real goddamn answers. <laughs> what type of stuff was he saying? <laughs> Blake was hurt. That's what he was saying. <laughs> Blake was fucking hurt. Which, by the way, shout out to Blake Griffin, man. He retired today. Yeah, that's one. Uh, a future Hall of Famer, according mm-hmm. to half of our Twitter uh, followers, a hood Hall of Famer to the other twenty five percent, and hell no to the remaining twenty five percent. Um, but continue. Go ahead. Real quick, yeah, shout out to Blake. I just want to shout out to Blake real quick. He's one of the cornerstones of my childhood. Pretty much had like the biggest, wow. uh, biggest social media moment. Pretty much uh, like the first big social media moment when he dunked on Powell when he dunked on uh, oh, yeah. Big Perk and all that stuff. It, I I hated them growing up, but I mean, I think that's a, a form of respect is when you hate on a pretty much. Yeah. He's he's killed the Lakers. But anyway, sixteen. Like I said, I had Giannis. I got KD on my second team. I, um, I think he's been exceptional this year. Uh, See, I was though. fighting between KD and LeBron because I was gonna say KD, but the Suns were just so inconsistent to me. Like the Lakers, I can forgive the inconsistency because LeBron was hurt and the role players were hurt. For the Suns, like they I'm, were no, dealing with line injuries too. They were, but like KD was playing like like I, if you go back to the beginning of the season, after the first month and a half, I said KD was the MVP. He was not playing like that after that. So go ahead, my bad. He was out there. He was out there by himself. But I, I'm All going right. KD because I think Bill was in and out of the lineup. But once Bill, once they have once the core guys are there, they win games. They locked up the state. They, they avoided the play in, which is a, a heck of a fortune for them. As much as has heavy of a load as they have put on KD this year, um, so I think that was big. I, he's Another extremely efficient season from him uh, across the board. I think 28. He's rebounding eight, eight, seven boards a game, distributing a little bit. But I just think he's been another exceptional KD. And this year, he, he recently uh, said that he didn't get hurt this year. Nobody flopped into his leg. I know a couple of times he messes MCL. He's a liar. He definitely slipped on his goddamn That was one sweat. time. But don't act like JaVale McGee ain't falling into his legs. No, but no. That's not that. what we're don't talking about, like that bro. That's happened, not what we're talking no, about. He no, said he didn't get that, hurt. That is a that, lie. That's that was a, a little, minor injury. No, but that, that like is weeks. a literal lie lie that was, was a, kevin but that, kevin kevin you told slip, a literal lie you definitely got hurt this season minor. and it and it was not because nobody flopped into your but leg that was a minor injury though his the, the legs were skinny as that mine was minor g but the ones when people flopped into his legs were long term so after katie i got anthony edwards obviously uh both ends uh rally the Timberwolves team to the high seat we've seen them in a very long time cat went down uh he pretty much <laughs> but yeah, Anthony Edwards has been great this year. Uh, a future staple of the league. Uh, Billy doing both ends and finished games. Uh, and this is just the plays. Um, he won a game by a last minute block. Uh, had one of the probably the best dunks in the last five years over John Collins. He just must see TV explosiveness and the ability to score at all three levels is, is fire. Shout out to Anthony Edwards. Now I'm going with Kawhi in my next spot. Uh, I know the uh, Clippers obviously close the year on a horrible note. They've been playing bad basketball, but Kawhi Leonard gets that next spot. Shout out to him. Uh, I think that he he's played the most games this year that he's played in a very long time. Uh, pretty much once he hit the 65 or 66, the, the limit to make All-NBA is when he all of a sudden disappeared. But uh, he, besides, outside of the last couple of months, he's been exceptional for the Clippers, uh, playing both ends, hitting big shots, uh, doing his thing. Just being Kawhi Leonard, being the robot, uh, carrying him to wins, and uh, just leading the team. And then my last All-NBA all second team spot, so I'm going to go to AD. I think AD has been exceptional. I talked about this with Pavy on the, either the last podcast or one of these podcasts, but this is arguably his best season as a Laker, even including 2020. Yeah. He uh, he has- Lean over a little bit. We can't see if the, your whole face, this brother. One, this one. Yeah, right, yeah. So. Yeah, he has literally been anchoring the Lakers um, defense all year, and he's been doing it on the offensive end as well. He's uh, also, I believe, top three in pretty much everybody's defensive player of the year ballot, uh, but the offense is also there. He's hitting mid-ranges. He's uh, posting up. He is pretty much like- He's a staple in this league as a, as a, as a, at the five position. A lot of people, uh, he, he yeah, he's definitely the second best five yeah. in the. Well, oh, no, third, he's not. Yeah, third behind him beating Jokic. Uh, but he's pretty much stable himself as the as like really a, a one hell of a player. Just he makes exceptional. He saves games, save plays consistently, and he can also do it on offense. Um, and then shot lead the third. Uh, my third team. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going book. I think book has had an insanely uh, efficient year this season. Um, I think his ability, uh, he, um, him and KD, obviously Bill was the one that's been more out of the lineup, but I think he's been great this year. So I'm going to book on my 13. I'm going Donovan Mitchell. I think he's kind of slept under the radar because Cleveland 
Um, they flamed out bad last year in the playoffs, but good thing this is a regular season award. I don't even getting like 26 a game. Uh, I think on like 47% from the field. He's dynamic. He is clearly the he's clearly the best player on that cap team, and they locked up the fourth seed. They right. fucking tanked it to the fourth seed. Get the fuck out of here. Dude, how do you tank to the how does that make sense? How do you tank to the fourth seed? G they G they tank to the fourth seed. You ain't see the last still, game of the season when they, they took out all their fucking players and I put mean, all them big men in the game and Armani Bates in the second half so to lose to the Hornets. Fuck out of here. So what? You still four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't no motherfucking credit no, for that what? shit, man. I don't want to hear that the shit, Demons man. Make that call? The no. Demons, the Demons he ain't on my call? third team because of that. He ain't on my third team because of that. Go ahead. We're talking about the 80 game award. He ain't on my third team because of that. He ain't on my third team because of that. Go ahead. And then I'm going, I'm giving it to Halliburton, uh, the ability to drag the uh be you, you do good dope, bud. You on the you are, you are the finest of the finest of the finest of the finest. I'm not doing finest. no dope, G. What about fucking Paolo Bantero? I still got two more slots. I got two more slots. I said three players. I got two more slots. But Halliburton don't act. Halliburton led the league in assists. He if no Halliburton, he no fail pace. off a cliff. No. And they still got a top six seed. He's not he a, is the no, whole engine no, behind that. He, the, the, the Pacers are whatever you want. That, you ain't they, even they, uh, named Sabonis on your list, and you got Halliburton. I got on two them? more players. Go ahead. The, 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 the what? The nine seed Kings. I'm so Go impressed. Halley, uh, this ability to just charge that that and run that Pacers team at, at the fast pace they do consistently. Ninety nine. I think that's very impressive. No Halliburton. The Pacers is the fucking. They down there with the Pistons or some shit. So I think that you got to take that into account. They one of the worst teams in the league without him, I feel like. And then you also, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw some bonus in there. The uh, walking triple-double, even though I feel like a lot of his stats is kind of empty sometimes because they uh, he's always ended up being a liability in the playoffs. And and but and then my last slot, I haven't kind of figured this out yet, but I think I'm going to go with uh, – uh, you mentioned Ben Carroll. Um, I guess I'll go. Oof. Oh, my bad. My last part going to Steph. Uh, I just think he's like, you know, when you look at that Warriors team, you was one of the main people to point out how, I mean, like, like, well, I mean, they have, they've had a couple of standouts this year. I mean, in Kaminga pods and Trey Davis Jackson, a couple of dudes have been able to really contribute. Wiggins ain't remember how to play basketball till about a month ago. Um, Clay, um, 0 for 10 today, the most inconsistent season in his career. And Steph is still getting out there, giving you 28, uh, one of the best three point shooters in the league. He like doing his thing, night and night out with the inconsistent rotations that Steve Kerr throws out there. I don't know why Steph didn't play fucking 48 minutes tonight. He subbed him out late, uh, I think beginning of the fourth or late third, something like that. Some nonsense, but just despite all of that, he's still giving you Steph Curry type presence and, and doing his thing. So, my last spot, I'm gonna go to Steph. All right, cool. And for me, uh, I have in my third team, I have Devin Booker. I have uh, Steph Curry. I have Rudy Gobert. I have um, Paolo Banchero. And for my last spot, I am going to go with... I don't even play 65 games. Hmm? That's what I'm going to have to comment. Oh, Donovan didn't play 65 games? Let me see. Donovan Mitchell. Where the hell is his name at? Donovan. How many points if a game? If he didn't, he then I'm putting How many points a game he averaged this year? I think 26. Pretty sure it's 26. Oh yeah, he didn't. Yep. Yep. He's not even on the list. Yep. I'm... Donovan didn't play. Donovan didn't play. How many did he play? I don't know, but it won 65. Uh get out. I tell you, I get up out the Zion then. All right. I'm not mad at that. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with I got one, I got one name left, right? I think so, yeah. I'm going I'm going with Wimby. Ooh, that's that's spicy. Without with no, it's not. Without a doubt, um, a top fifteen player in the league this year. Twenty points a game, ten rebounds, uh, uh three blocks, two steals a game. Uh he brought his shooting averages up to let me see, hold on actually, because I believe it's above. Hold on, wait a minute. I wanna wanna Want to make sure I'm want to make sure I'm right. Let me make sure. Uh, Wimby's stats for this season: He averaged 21, 21.4 points per game, ten point six blocks, three point nine assists. He shot forty six point five percent from the field, thirty two point five percent from the three point line, seventy nine point six percent from the field goal range. Win share three point seven, per twenty three. I loved everything that I saw from him. Um, you know this year, and to me, I don't think I think that. 
and I, I, again, I'm sorry, average 1.2 uh, steals a game and 3.6 blocks a game. But I don't think that there is a player in the league um, that night in, night out, this year was ex- was as exhilarating to watch as Victor Wimbanyana. I don't think that there was a better defensive player in the league, pound for pound, player to player. I'm not talking about the team game. I'm talking about the specific player to player matchup. I don't think there was anybody on the floor that was better than him defensively. Everybody was running away from him. You saw Draymond Green even endorsed him and said that he believed he deserved to be defensive player of the year. I believe Wimby deserved that spot over anybody else. And I know everybody will talk about how bad his team was, but I don't think that they were really making an emphasis on winning this year. I think they were trying to figure out what it was that Wimby does well. And what they figured out was he can do every goddamn thing well, including hit a, including hit a sham god, turn around, dribble, one-step dribble, lay up to the uh, rim from the three-point line. I'm with you. Or walk up or yeah. run up the court and pull up while playing Nikola. Like, like, this, bro, you know how crazy Wimpy is, bro? Like, <laughs> crazy. Like, I just, like, trust like, me. Think we, about it. Look. Think about it, right? You're Jokic, right? Your immediate reaction whenever a big man is running up the floor with the ball or you're or to that big man is to run to the middle and get to the spot. If Wimpy is running up the court, you have to guard him past the three-point line or you will in the future. That's a, man, that's what I can't. That's we, a cheat we, code. I can't believe we let Glasses Malone hop on here and lie about Wimby like that. That's I still hop to sometimes that he let that's that man come on here and lie about Wimby like that. But yeah, Wimby is yeah he's insane. He just, he's, he he's changing the five position. The greatness. He's changing the five position. Wimby is changing the five position. But like, I don't think he's changing the five position. He is changing the five position because if your five position can't get out there and move their feet and get out there and do certain things, you're not gonna be able to compete. We gotta he, stop. Wimby's gonna blow you out of the water if what you don't is have his nickname? move like that. What is his nickname? Alien. One on one. I feel that's, you, that's but like, I mean, that's you like still that's got like me walking around. That's like me for the past eight years on this goddamn podcast, lying to the world, saying that somebody was gonna be the next LeBron. <laughs> now well, look, I yeah. ain't gonna lie, I was lying, uh, uh, saying that somebody was <laughs> better than LeBron before certain ages until Luka Doncic came along, and now I got a legitimate case <laughs> every year that Luka Doncic plays basketball. For the rest of his career, as long as he win, as long as he win two, three rings, that he has had a better career than LeBron James. I remember I, that that's an argument that I can make. I remember that the rest of the LeBron arguments are shit at this point, because there is no one like him. So, I, before we rush to say he's revolutionizing anything, let's make sure that what he is doing can be replicated. I don't even think we know if what he's doing can be replicated, because we don't even know. Like, they interviewed Wimby at the end of the season. They said, how do you feel about the season? He said, well, I'm sure that everybody else, I did good. But if you ask me, I feel like I didn't do that well. I only feel like I'm at 15% of what I could be. And even when I would have a good game or I would do something historic, I would go home. I like, ah, that was a good game, but I could have did better. Think about that. Talking like Prince Ikeem. But that no, that's that's how he that's how he said it. I had a good game, but I could have did better. <laughs> this this kid is the truth, so I'm gonna take Wimby. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's get in a couple more topics. Let's speed through some of these. Will Kawhi Leonard perform in the playoffs? I believe that he has a torn meniscus. I've been told by some inside sources um, that Kawhi Leonard is perfectly fine. That they just want to rest him, and he'll be. Uh, ready for the playoffs. So what do you think? Will Kawhi be um, available to perform? And do you think he will perform up to his standard in the playoffs? Or do you think that the Mavericks will make a light work of the Clippers like I do? Because I believe the Mavericks will beat the Clippers in six games. Sheesh, uh, six games. Um, What I got to say, I mean, if Kawhi is healthy, he's going to go out there and he's going to be exceptional. Kawhi Leonard, uh, night, year in, year out, when he's there, is one of the best playoff performers we have ever seen. He's hit one of the biggest playoff shots in history. Obviously, the big shot over uh, the Raptors in Game Seven uh, that bounced all over the rim and he went crazy. Um, the fadeaway uh, leaning towards the baseline, but just in uh, overall in general, like the 2019 playoff run was exceptional. He was winning uh, Finals MVPs his first like four years into the league. He was already getting those. He 
is um he almost they uh went up, in theory he was gonna beat the uh 73 win warriors if he didn't sprain his ankle in uh 2016, I believe, whatever year that was. But yeah, just year, there's plenty of years you can look point back to his career where he has been an absolute monster in the playoffs. When he's healthy, he is gonna get to his spots. Uh he's gonna get to the elbow, he's gonna get wherever he wants, he's gonna get whatever shot he wants to get, and he's gonna knock it down. He's also gonna Go on the other side of the floor. He's going to uh, create havoc on defense. He's going to blow screens up. He's going to use his big, uh, his hands, his length to uh, poke poke the balls out, get deflections, do all of the above. So, and when he's out there, so I don't see why that would change, uh, barring his health. If he's healthy, I expect the exact same thing from him. But I don't have the Clippers. I think, um, I think one of the most false narratives, um, in the NBA and in the world right now is that the Luca owns the Clippers. I think that's I hate when people say that. Kendrick Perkins got on national TV and mimicked. Luca smacking the Clippers with a belt, and that's just straight that's straight BS. I don't appreciate that. That's a lie. You can't be 0 2 versus team and own them. Doesn't make sense unless what the coach is drawing on the, on the, on the that's what the coach is drawing up is oh we want all you want to do is go out there and have Luca get numbers. That's not what we're doing. We we play the, we play, we play the game to win. So until he actually beats his team, and even though if he does beat, them, I still want, want, don't want people running around saying he owns the team because he doesn't. It, it'll be the first time he beats them in the series. They've met twice already. This is the third time. You don't own this team just because you get big stats with him. But I do think this year, with the upgrades that this Mavericks team has made, adding Gafford, adding PJ Washington, um, adding Kyrie Irving, um, these these are guys um, that weren't there in the past years versus this Clippers team, and just with the way Lucas playing and the dynamic of him and Kyrie being the most dangerous, arguably the most dangerous duo in the league, uh, the Gafford additions and the, the lively the front court is monstrous. Gafford is I think shooting above seventy percent from the field. He's having one of the easiest jobs in the league. Luca, Luca, Kyrie, those guys they spoon feed him. Um, I just like I really like how what they're doing, but I think this is year they get over the hump and Dallas does beat them. But if Kawhi's out there, I expect Kawhi Leonard to perform, be if not the best player in the series, right behind Luka for best player in the series if he's out there. Yeah, um, I think the Dallas Mavericks are going to make light work of the Clippers. Um, the Clippers cannot guard small guards, or they cannot guard guards or wings in the pick and roll. Um, I think Kawhi is over the hill as a defender. Paul George is over the hill as a defender. Russell Westbrook is over the hill as a defender. James Harden has never been a good defender. Daniel Tice is an average defender. Visa Zubak is a solid defender. Terrence Mann is a great defender, but he can't uh, create enough on offense, so they leave him open, which makes him a weak spot for the Clippers on the floor. Um, Bones Highland will not play at all. Kaya Jones will not, not play yeah. at all. <laughs> Um, and I believe that <laughs> the same thing that Darvin Ham and the Lakers did to LeBron when LeBron scored, I believe it was 19 in the fourth quarter, and I was there to witness that. They're going to um, spend the first couple quarters trying to run and keep pace with the Clippers. And then come fourth quarter, they're going to look on the floor. Who's the weakest defender? Point them out. Put them in a screen and roll. And you're either going to get a wide open corner three to a – uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. or or one of those other guys, or you're going to get a lob at the rim to Gafford. Um, and then if not, and it breaks down, you got Kyrie Irving, the greatest isolation basketball player in NBA history, and you got Luka Doncic, one of the greatest uh, top 25 basketball players in NBA history to me. Um, and I just don't think that the Clippers have enough. They're not going to fool me again. They fooled me about four times since I've been covering them. I'm not being fooled again. They're going to get eliminated in six. Remember I said it. I'm not taking it back. It is what it is. That's how I feel. I see. But I, um, the thing is, that's what they did in the last series. They was able to get those. They was able to get the matchup they wanted. They had Zubac going one-on-one with uh, uh, Luka in the pick every time. He was exploiting that, and they still couldn't get over the hump. But I do think that this Yeah, year, but we have to – We but can we stop talking about last time? Because this team is not the same team. Daniel Gafford was not on that team. P.J. Washington, who's a threat from the mid-range and can hit a corner three, was not on that team. It's so the same Clippers team, the Clippers got Westbrook now. They got they got the, they got James Harden. This is not the same Clippers team either. They're not better. Not the same Clippers team. I don't think the Clippers team is is that is like they're not the same, but they're way worse defensively. James Harden is one of the worst defenders in the NBA. He it's been that way. Russell mm. Westbrook can guard Kyrie or I, Luka? I, 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 I mean, he could. He could <laughs> I'd rather have I'd rather have Westbrook on them guys than a couple other. You do good though. 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 You do good though.
fuck out of here with that. I guess, man. Like I said, I picked the Mavs too, but I'm just don't. I'm not gonna sleep on the Clippers. Though. I know that they they don't they're do still that. No don't do that. Look, the Mavs is my picture. No, don't do that. Don't do that. No, but listen. Don't what don't do that. Don't do that, brother. I'm telling you. Just don't even don't even get don't get anybody's hopes up. They're gonna get washed. Uh, but let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next topic. It's over for the Warriors. They are eliminated from the play-in. Number uh, 10 seed eliminated by the Sacramento Kings. Steph Curry basically said that he can't see himself in Golden State without uh, Clay and Draymond. And he followed up by saying, I just want to win post-game versus the, you know, their elimination to the Kings. What are your impressions on where the Warriors go from here? Um, obviously... They're in salary cap hell, and they're actually over the second apron. So they're either going to have to shed a lot. Of, so they're going to have to shed a lot of salary or trade a bunch of their young guys in, in hopes that someone will take on some of their salary. Clay is up for renegotiation. I've been trying to trade Clay all season. Um, <laughs> Wiggins, I believe it's time for them to move on from him. I think Kaminga needs to be the centerpiece and the star. I think you trade away everyone else that is not uh, Steph Curry, Draymond, and Kaminga. And I think you just try to go with a completely brand new slate. I like Trace um, Jackson Davis. I think he's very good. He can be a solid big man in their rotation for them for years to come. But I do think that what they need is a new shooting guard. I think that they need, uh, um, I think they need a new shooting guard that is more of a 3 and D Dante DiVincenzo type of guy. They thrive best when Clay was more of a 3 and D type of player that could flame it up. Um, I think that they need to go and try to find a stronger option at center. Uh, I also think that the Warriors should permanently move Draymond Green to the bench and bring in a new power forward so that way they can run their offense different to start the game and then bring Draymond in to create chaos and then run that old school style Warriors basketball. Because I believe that, you know, Pavi uh, said this, and I believe it was like two. That he thought that the Warriors, um, you know, you know, the rest of the league had caught up to the Golden State Warriors. And Joel, I think you froze, so you might want to yeah, log out and log back in. in. But Pavi mentioned back in 2019 that he thought that the league had caught up to the Warriors. And me personally, I was fighting against it. But in actuality, the league did catch up to them in, 20, in 2019. And that was really kind of the end of it. Um, what they did was, you know, you, you know, you couldn't, you, you can't replicate the greatness of what the Warriors were when they were at their peak. Um, and as you watch guys get older and age out and lose some of their potency, I think you just see um, just a true testament to how great they were for so long. You know what I mean? So for me, I think where they go from here is just rebuild. Um, and they're in so much salary cap hell. I'm not sure how they're going to rebuild, but I wouldn't be surprised if Steph Curry requested a trade. And if he did, the Warriors should abide by it and do their best to trade him. And whatever team out there better be willing to give up mad picks. I would love to see Steph Curry in the Chicago Bulls uniform. Oh my God! Here you go. Trade him oh for God. no, for real. Hit the trade button. For your, hit the button for yourself. <laughs> Trade him for <laughs> you do good though. You do good though. You trade him for Zach Levine. Oh my god. Mad. Oh my trade him god, for Zach bro. Levine and mad picks. <laughs> Zach Levine. Give me Zach Levine, Patrick Williams, and mad picks. Like I need all of your picks. All of them. And all the ones you got from everybody else too. And then I try to rebuild around Zach Levine and Jonathan Kaminga. And Draymond Green. And then we got a wing, a wing heavy team. You go get you a point guard that can score, that can distribute. You're crazy. You get man. you a center that can stretch the floor or a rim runner. You good. You back in the mix. Uh that's hilarious. But um my thoughts on the why I think it's uh, I think it's time to move on coaching wise. Uh I think Steve Kerr, I think he shoots this team uh in the, in the head himself a lot of the times. Um, like, I used to start off just with Kaminga. Kaminga, I believe, was ready to break out at the beginning of the year, but he was playing 10, 15 minutes a night. 
even when he's doing stretches, he ended up right back on the bench as soon as Kerr finally realized this and he played him 25 plus. No, as soon tonight. as Kaminga called him out in the media, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's correct. As soon as one of the one of the rare situations where a coach got called out by a player in the media, then right after that, he's playing them and then he's he's on the court. Stuff like that has been happening consistently. I think Moses Moody is, has a ability to be one of the most consistent, better role players in the league. He doesn't play as much as he should play. Trace Davis Jackson played 11 minutes tonight. How? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Especially when you got DeMontis no Sabonis sense. out there grabbing rebounds. They, were, they was running three. They had Pods, Chris Paul, and Steph out there at the same yeah, time. Yeah, what, what the hell is Steve Kerr like, doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, I just think he did get dope. <laughs> a lot of good dope. I think it's time to move on coaching-wise. I think he stunts the growth of their youth, and I think he I think he mismanages Steph a lot. I think he had a hell of a run. He's, he's no, without a question, one of the greatest coaches in NBA history based off what he has done, but I think that – for the last couple of years, he has been sabotaging this team. So I think first off, start off moving on from the coach. You know where he's going if he leave. <laughs> he's not coming to the Lakers. Where he going? He's either going to the Lakers or the Clippers. I guess, but no. I, imagine the, I don't. The Clippers are gonna get eliminated in the first round. Ty Lue is getting fired instantly after that game. <laughs> instantly after the game, because all of this to me is really his fault. And a lot of his mismanagement as well of this team and arrogance on his behalf. He's going to get fired. And then they're going to be like, oh, we need to keep this team. Kawhi Leonard knee messed up. He's going to need to rehab. We're going to a new stadium. We're going to do offense. Steve Kerr, come be the coach of the Warriors for $100 million for the next six years or something. Watch. Wait, it's gonna be like, the Clippers? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The Clippers. He gonna, for $100 million? Yeah, they watch. They're going to sign him like a seven-year $100 million deal. Sheesh. And he's going to say he's going to retire the Clippers coach. Jerry West is there. He's comfortable with all of these guys. Watch. It's going to happen. Remember I said that. And if not the Clippers, they're going to fire Darvin Ham, even though they sh – even though I will say this. You all hate Darvin Ham. I don't hate Darvin Ham. But Darvin Ham has gotten you to a conference finals, and now he has gotten you to the playoffs again, and you all have a chance to beat the defending champions in the first round. And if you do, you really got to walk to the finals. I think – as much as you want to and we want to be upset at Darvin Ham's mistakes, you have to the Lakers were never going were the, the Lakers were never gonna be the number one C in the West this year, right? Do you agree? Uh not number one. It could have been top six though for sure. That's not uh, no, that's not that's that's no, I'm just asking you I just asked you a question. One, not number one, no. Okay. No. So um, let me finish real quick. So with that being said, if you're Darvin Ham. And you bring in these new pieces that you think you, will you be able to utilize and use in the playoffs? You have to experiment, and if you don't, then what was the point of you bringing them in just to do the same exact thing you did last year? So even as frustrating as it may be, theoretically you all are in the same exact place as you were last year because if you beat the Nuggets, you're probably going to the finals. I don't believe that the Lakers are going to beat the Nuggets and then lose to the Mavericks or the Clippers. And then lose to the Thunder or the fucking Timberwolves. It's not fucking happening. It's not happening. You feel me? I feel you. But go ahead. My bad. But, um, you good. But I mean, as far as like their future goal, I think you obviously you start with the coach. Uh, Chris Paul was a one year deal that that's gonna help um relieve their salary because he's off the books this year. That's gonna help them a lot. I'm not sure if they end up blowing it up or not. Um, obviously they have Clay's bird rights. So if they want to go over to Cap again and re-sign him, they can do that. Um, it's hard to really look at the team and see what they want to do in the, in, in the near future. Um, I don't like you say Steph Curry is still Steph Curry, and he will fill up the Chase Center. That's a new arena that you still want to be able to fill up these next couple of years. And you might Steph might want to just be a Tim Duncan, Kobe type player where he gets uh, stayed the whole entire career, get a farewell tour, the, that whole statue, the whole you feel me, the whole thing. If that's the case, I mean, you just ride Steph Curry until you can't no more. Uh. And I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much. It. I mean, I, would they ever be in contention with this team with the, with these guys? I I don't think so. Um, obviously you don't really. They got they get another mid draft pick. They not don't don't have any lottery picks on the way. It's just yeah, they're kind of in like a, they're kind of in no man's land. But I mean, you had to. Um, I think you can settle for that though. People out they, they like to bag on the Lakers because we didn't win anything from what twenty eleven to. 2020, the nine-year stretch of like pretty much, you know, or eight, six-year stretch of poor basketball. I mean, that, that goes with the game. Nobody is good for 20 years, 20, 20 30, 10, 15 years straight. Like, it's going to be downfalls. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You had, you argue, like, 
the best team in the league for a very, very long time. It's just time for them to, I mean, just make sure Steph uh, ride, uh, you know, ride him out the league the uh, appropriate way, make sure he gets paid, make sure uh, your, your arena is still popping. Maybe Steph, Steph, the Golden State is still, it's, a, it's an attractive place. Maybe as some of these contracts, they get some more cash base, they can maybe bring somebody in to play with Steph. Like he obviously, one of the big rumors over the deadline was the whole, they offered a trade for LeBron, whatever. I'm not saying that's realistic, but if they can bring somebody in, but just, just make sure Steph gets out the, uh, Rides out the league as best as you can, and obviously, if you say if you question trade, trade him. But if not, just just rock with that. But I mean, a, a championship is probably something. The twenty twenty two championship makes really relieves. It doesn't doesn't look all that bad. You just won a ship. You weren't supposed to win a couple of years ago. Nobody had them winning that, doing what they did a couple of years ago. But it's just, um, I mean, the era is over. It happens. We've seen dynasties fall over and over again uh, as time passes. The Spurs was. Uh, They've been trash for for a while now. Obviously, the Lakers are bad for a long time. The Heat were bad after they won two championships in four years. And the list goes on. It's just they're another one of those dynasties that nothing lasts forever. It's with the league. Yep. So as we get ready to get up out of here and wrap up, um, we got the NBA East playing games. Um, who you got? We got Miami at Philadelphia tomorrow. We are unsure if MB will play, but I guess we'll see. Who you got? I got Miami. I got uh, Miami. I think they agree. They go out there and they get the job done. I trust Coach Spo and those guys to get out there and be prepared for uh, Miami. I think even if MB does play, they got Bam and they got guys. Uh, Kevin Love is a good post They got guys for MB and they should be prepared to knock them out. I got Miami. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, um, I was actually going to take Miami, but I'm going to take Philly. Philly is actually favored to win uh, by 5.5, which to me means that the odds makers think Embiid is going to play. I think Embiid comes out and puts on a virtual performance. If I'm the 76ers, I want the Knicks. Like, I think the Heat can still beat the Celtics in the first round like, they, like they've done time and time again when they've upset people. So if I'm them, I'm thinking we need to go get that second seed. We can beat the Knicks in six or seven. Let's go do it. Second game. Uh, we got the Atlanta Bulls Hawks at the Chicago Bulls. Who you got? I'm taking the Bulls, obviously. I'm from Chicago. I'm taking DeMar to go off for 30 points. Kobe White, MVP of the night, 36 points. Kobe White, yeah, that's my most improved player of the year, uh, Ward. He's been exceptional this year. Shout out to Kobe White. Obviously, no Trey Young for the Hawks, so I got to ride with you on this one uh, with the uh, Bulls. I'm going with the Bulls as well. I think Kobe yep. White done something new. Caruso has been an exceptional uh, player. Um, I watched him in the last game of the season versus the Knicks. It's all over the place. In threes, getting deflections, diving on the floor. They got um, and I just got them uh, the Hawks without Trey Young. Yeah, I'm going with the Bulls for sure. So fans, we appreciate you all. Late night hoops and brews after the play-in. I will try to get some more time in, but if not, we will be back with you all next week for the beginning of the playoffs live with the happy hour on Monday. We got the, we bring in the multicam back. So we gonna have multiple cameras again. We got a new switcher. We got some new cool stuff coming up for y'all. Shout out to all the fans. We love y'all. It's your boy TPJ. Find me on Twitter at TPJFHMB and make sure you follow us at Hoops and Brews. Joel, go ahead and get your plug in. Get me on uh, Instagram, Joel R. Wilson, Twitter at the Jolts. Follow us at Hopes and Brews. Thank y'all for tuning in. Good episode. Yes, sir, fam. And until next time, we will get up with y'all later. They thought our run was over. But we back on our grind, so let's get it.